In this video, we'll take a look at updating firmware on the DECT base stations and DECT phones with the 5.x firmware. The current DECT base station we have is running 5.0.1 firmware, and we're going to look at the specific parameters we need to use to update it. Okay, we're going to take a look at our PC that's running the TFTP D64 app. So it's at 192.168.1.34 IP address. And then the pathway, if you look at the top here, you notice it's desktop TFTP IP decked firmware. And then the specific firmware 5.1.2. The next thing that may be a little bit tricky the first time you view is the actual naming of the firmware itself. And um, one thing I suggest is if you look at the release notes, generally there'll be a section that talks about the naming convention that needs to be used for the firmware upgrade via local TFTP. But you'll notice here there's two different files. We wouldn't actually look at the top file that I'm pointing to right now. So we're going to use the the two numbers, the ending number 203 and the beginning number of 501. So for the required version, we're going to list 501. And then a required branch would be the 203. And then we're going to click Save Start Update. We're going to hit OK. OK one more time. We should see immediate firmware upgrade status indication. TFTP D64 application start. The actual base station firmware upgrade is, is fairly quick, generally four to eight minutes. And then there's another approximate roughly two minutes of it writing to flash and reboot stage. One thing to note, if you're deploying this on WebEx calling, once the base station and deck phones are deployed on WebEx calling, this is automated as far as firmware updates over time. It's not something you need to do any specific tasks. When you're onboarding the deck base station and the decked phones, generally the onboarding process does the firmware updates automatically. However, if you have really old firmware on the base station and or the deck handsets and you're running into some issues with the onboarding process, one of the things I like to do is if you've verified your network connectivity, you looked at the WebEx calling port usage document, and you don't believe anything is blocking the traffic from the base station, the deck phone, and WebEx resources in the cloud, then one of the things to consider is bumping up the firmware to 480 SR1 as a starting point if you run into a situation like that. And what we're going to see um, here is when the firmware gets towards the end, we will see the pattern on the actual base station change as far as the blinking pattern and or the actual color that the LED is illuminating. So we'll take a look at that here in a few moments. The one thing uh, to note is, so part one, we're going to bump up the firmware on the base station. And then part two, we're going to bump up the firmware on the actual handset. So as I mentioned, the actual base station firmware update is relatively quick. The item that does take an extended period of time is going to be the handsets. So one thing you definitely want to be prepared is to make sure the handsets are placed in their cradle in effort they are charged during the firmware upgrade process. So just to recap here, we've started off with a base station that has 5.0.1 firmware, and we're bumping it up to 5.1.2 firmware. When you're viewing this video, most likely there will be newer firmware available.
in, in a few moments here, once the transfer of the binaries to the base station nears completion, we'll actually switch over to looking at the actual base station as far as the LED pattern because it's towards the last phase where we're going to ch see a change in the actual pattern. And what it's doing there, it's, it's writing it to flash, and then once it finishes writing it to flash, it's going to go ahead and reboot the base station. The one other thing also to note is the computer that you're running the TFTP D64, if you're not getting any connectivity as far as no connections from the base station to the computer, one of the first things to check is going to be Microsoft Windows Defender to make sure that it is not blocking basically a personal firewall on the Windows computer or whatever computer you may be using. Okay, so if you notice the uh, pattern on the LED for the base station just changed a few moments ago. And, and this will probably take, you know, in the neighborhood of two plus minutes for it to write to flash and then we'll see a reboot occur. And then once it reboots, we'll kind of go back to the web interface. But going back what I was mentioning about the TFTP PC, if there's no connection being made, uh, definitely take a look at the Windows Defender or personal firewall on the PC to make sure it's not being blocked. Um, also, another thing that can be very useful is running Wireshark on a computer that's running TFTP D64 uh, because the information is being sent in clear text. So even if you get stuck in a situation where the syntax, you're not 100% sure on the syntax to be used for the version major number and the minor number, kind of the two boxes I was showing you there a few moments ago. That's something with the Wireshark capture can very see, very easily see in the payload of the TFTP packets what is being actually requested by the base station versus what is actually being offered on the TFTP server. So if you need to do any type of adjustments in the actual characters that you're typing in for the versioning, that's a very easy method to, to spot what may be the problem. The, the other thing to note is uh, if the computer is in a different VLAN that is being blocked. Okay, so, so now we're going to actually go back to the base station as, as it's completed here with the firmware update. So you notice now it's a 5.1.2 firmware. So this kind of completes the firmware upgrade of the base station. So this part, as I mentioned, is relatively quick. The part that actually takes an extended period of time is going to be the actual handset. So if you notice my handset currently is 5.1.1. It shows it here as 05-01-01. So we want to bump this up to the 5.1.2 firmware. We want to make sure this is placed in a charger, the actual handset, because this will actually take quite a bit of time. And then the firmware we're going to be looking at is going to be for the 6825. So the one we want to use is the 501-203 firmware. So we're going to go ahead and use that as a reference for the actual firmware number for the 6825. So that'll be the second item listed here for the firmware. So the 6825-501. And then the required branch would be the 203. And then we look good on that. We're going to click the Start Update and we're going to hit OK. And uh, what I was mentioning is if the PC running TFTP is on a different VLAN than the actual DEC base station, because it's very common to run these devices in a VoIP VLAN, and then a PC would be in a data VLAN. One, one other thing I want to note here is I am speeding up this portion of the video. The actual firmware upgrade on handsets can take quite a bit longer. Typically, what I found doing this many times over X amount of years, that the firmware, the fastest you may see, might be in a 30-something minute territory. And it can go up as, as high as like 1 hour, 10 minutes, 1 hour, 15 minutes. 
So that that is something that you'll start, and you probably want to go do some other projects, emails, go to lunch, et cetera, et cetera, meetings, and then come back after a period of time and see how things are going. So definitely, you know, make sure all of the handsets are in the cradles, and then start it. You can kind of view this for a few minutes to make sure things working okay. Go do other things, and then come back. You definitely can do concurrent devices at the same time as far as firmware updates on them. Um, you generally you know, want to keep it within reason. So if there's a power outage, if there's DHCP issues or what have you, you don't want to have a huge fleet of devices with problems. So whatever you feel comfortable with, most people will just do a few at a time um, as far as the base stations go and enhance sets and then if you feel very confident you have UPSs and power grid issues are not an issue where you're at then that's something definitely consider but going back to the location of the actual PC with TFTP TFTP D64 so another possibility is access control list so in certain deployments the PC being located on the data VLAN, this being located on the VoIP VLAN, there not, may not be connectivity. So that's another thing to consider if you're doing this in an environment that you're typically not acclimated to. It's a brand new site. You're, you're traveling to some site. So that may be a consideration. Um, it's always smart if you have a small switch that's PoE that you can isolate things. So your PC and the deck base station on a mini switch you know, preferable that the switch is manageable in case you have to do any type of troubleshooting, viewing statistics, has DHCP option. Luckily, the TFTP D64 application does offer DHCP server functionality, and it works very well for scenarios where you have to isolate stuff. I've in the past just done a PoE injector, cable connection directly from my PC, PO injector directly to the telephony or other device, and then use the TFTP D64 as a mini DHCP server, just enough so I can actually bring the device online, update the firmware, and do any other config changes before I move the device to the normal network port where it will be deployed at. The one thing to note that sometimes is a question is um, there, there's a version of the firmware you'll notice on the right hand side of the screen that says RGD. That's actually for the ruggedized version of the 6825 phone. So there are environments, um, factories under other environments where you want to have ruggedized equipment. So just be aware you might have a situation where the uh, customer or, or if it's your environment, you may have a mix of both devices. So you just want to make sure you're applying the correct firmware. If it's not the ruggedized version like I have, I just have the normal version of the 6825, then you'd use the firmware I am showing in the video. If you have the ruggedized version, that you want to use the 6825-RGD version of the firmware. So just, just a footnote there, sometimes that throws folks a little bit. And also I've noticed in the website when you go to download the firmware, depending on what version of firmware you go to download, sometimes the positioning of the ruggedized versus the non-ruggedized version of firmware is flip-flopped. So just before downloading, take a quick look at it, validate what type of 6825 or 6823 device you have. And, and select the appropriate firmware for that device. Okay, so towards the very end, we are gonna see a different pattern of lighting on the, on the deck handset. And during this phase, it's gonna be writing basically the firmware to flash. And then th this is gonna take a couple minutes. At the very end, it's gonna actually reboot the, the actual deck handset. Again, we wanna make sure that the deck handsets are placed in a cradle and being charged during this phase. It's very critical. As I mentioned, the uh, firmware update or upgrade uh, is not very quick. My experience has been in the, in the mid 30 minutes at a minimum, like 35 minutes, that's, that's probably the fastest I've seen it. And I've seen it take as much as one hour and 15 minutes. Um, so that's something, again, we just want to make sure the units are placed in a the cradle. They're left alone so they can go into idle state. 
Um, because what I've noticed is if, if you're doing stuff on the units, that will delay the firmware upgrade from actually starting. So you, you know, put in a cradle, leave it alone, and you should start seeing it firmware upgrade here. And what we'll see at the very end here is once it completes applying the new firmware to flash, the 6825 will actually reboot itself. Then what I like to do is I like to go into the menu of the 6825, the status menu, and validate you know what it shows there. And then also show the same type of pattern on the actual web GUI of the base station. If this is at a remote location where you're physically not at, Maybe you're the IT manager or you're the value-added reseller that's helping, helping a customer remote location. You'd obviously be using the web interface on the base station itself. If you're physically at the site and you're the person you know, just holding the phone and somebody else is remotely doing the firmware update, then you would use the LCD menu on the phone itself to validate that the firmware is updated. So either or way, you can kind of leverage that. The, the other thing I should note is I did some earlier videos regarding earlier firmer versions. If you're in the 4. something firmer version, then bumping it up to 480SR1 and then bumping it up to 5.0 firmer version, there is a special stepping you need to do if you do have a base station and or handset that is below 480SR1. It must be first be updated to 480SR1 at which point you can bump it up higher and firmer version to the five versions like I'm showing here. So I will leave a link for my video I created the other year regarding that. Also there's notes on the download page that kind of go into this as a, the, the typical of a box has like a yellow exclamation um, symbol by it. Um, so that's something you do want to read very carefully so you under understand the steppings. And also in the future, you know, if things change, there may be additional information they may post there. So what we should be seeing here soon is the phone doing its reboot, at which point we'll validate, you know, let the phone boot up and then we'll validate uh, the information if it's updated to the new firmware. And, and the key thing here is just patience. This, this is not a quick process. I've actually sp uh, sp uh, you know, speeded up the video quite a bit on the, on the TFTP firmware transfer portion for the actual handset. So it's, it's gonna seem like it's not moving. Luckily, if you're using the TFTP D64 application, it does have the horizontal progress bar. And, and you will see it, you know, inch along every so often, not very quick, again, slow pro, okay. So it's going through the reboot phase right now. And then uh, we'll take a look at it here in a few, so it's showing it's charging, of course, as I mentioned, very critical. Okay, so it's registered back. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer. We're gonna go into the menu. We're gonna go to the gear button. Then we're going to find a status option here in the menu. Oh, okay, I almost missed it. Let's go status. And now it's going to actually retrieve that information. So we know the base station is 5.1.2. That's great. So we've earlier validated IP address of the base station, MAC address, which I'm blurring. Okay, and then we have the software version of the 6825. And it is showing it's 5.1.2. So here it says 05-01-02, but it, this is the 5.1.2 firmware. Thank you for viewing this video. Hopefully this helps with the firmware upgrade of the DEC base station and also the DEC handset. Thank you.